I don't know about you, but I personally love in video games when I can hit things until their hit points reach zero without mine reaching zero. It's really the best strategy in all games ever made. With the Realms of Dreams update in Guild Wars 2, ArenaNet has made that even easier for us to do by using Heal Staff on Warrior. I've already made a few videos on this prior to full release, but I decided to take a break from my one class a month challenge for the month of March and dive into the deep end on some staff gameplay from a solo PvE perspective and see how it turned out. We're going to take a look at the skill changes from the beta build that I reviewed in December, as well as sample builds for Core Warrior and each elite spec. We'll find out which one is deserved of the crown as my king of the staff builds and which will be yours but before we get to that let's talk about the changes from the beta for starters bullet catcher and the final move in the auto attack chain had their sound effects significantly improved and it fits much better into the overall feel of warrior as well as not just being grating on the ears the auto attack also no longer instantly cancels bullet catcher instead behaving as it should and pausing itself which is great. Slot number two's Valiant Leap got a Leap Finisher added to it, which I said either a Leap or Blast Finisher would be great here, and we got it. So, I'm happy. Slot number three's Line Breaker was completely reworked and is much, much better now. This skill had the potential to destroy the overall kit if it wasn't changed, and ArenaNet really listened on this one. If you don't know, previously it was a targeted skill, which either required an enemy or an ally target, and it changed what its effects were based on what you targeted. Enemies re received some damage, as well as cripple and weakness. Allies would receive healing and buffs, as well as a stun break. The issue I previously mentioned being the fact that due to Guild Wars 2's game design choices, targeting allies mid-combat was extremely atypical and could ruin the entire flow of a situation not to mention the awful pathing that comes with those types of abilities. They've modified it by taking away the damage as well as the cripple to the enemy and the allied stun break, but made it an AoE that once you place the template, you charge to and release the skill. The animation can be a bit long and clunky. However, if you just need to drop it right on top of yourself, you get around it easily enough by either targeting right below you or activating the skill while you're still hovering over the action bar. For me, I use cast on release, so I just tap three over the bar and I roar in place. No long charge animation. Much, much improved. Thank you for listening, ArenaNet. Slot number four's snap pull is unchanged as far as I can see, which is fine because it was in a good spot. Slot number five's bullet catcher, in addition to the previous fixes I mentioned earlier, also lost its boom duration increase, which I don't think is a big issue at all considering the overall build effectiveness as it stands now. Really, ArenaNet tweaked this weapon in a great way, and I can't argue much with where it's at now. You adventurers let me know down in the comments if you disagree with that, but after probably 15 hours of various gameplay with the staff, I'm very happy with it. So let's get down to some crunchy specifics. Before we go into builds, let's talk about gear. All of these builds I used the same gear for. These builds I'm working with are originally geared towards group content PvE support, like strikes and things of that nature. So, they're all recommended with Harriers and Relic of the Monk and Rune of the Monk. Weapon sigils are concentration and transference on the staff for that. I personally used Berserker's gear in all of my testing and swapped out Rune of the Monk for Relic of the Midnight King. There's some other options out there that could be interesting. Relic of the Reaper could have some fun synergy with running a lot of shouts. A Relic of the Trooper could increase your Condi cleanse if necessary. Relic of the Thief is a classic one for increased damage output. Lots of possibilities here. Choice is yours. I also kept my Sigil of Impact and Sigil of Force for my weapon skills as I'm focusing on solo PvE play here and still want damage output. I also had Rune of the Scholar for my armor. Now that we've talked gear, let's talk builds. This Berserker Quick Heal build I ended up rocking with, the framework came to me via Mucklux video that he put together from his support weapon testing livestream, which I was very surprised to see Muckluck lowering himself to play Warrior, but I respect the hustle. Maybe soon he'll switch to the best race in the game. I'm going to tell you about his version and then my tweaks I've made to it for open world PvE. Worth noting this build is also on Snowcrows, but Muckluck posted his a little bit before. So for this we're rocking Tactics, Discipline, and Berserker in a 2-3-2, 2-1-3, two, 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 and 1-2-1 one, one format as you can see here. Mukluk's original build has Discipline in a 3-1-3 format, but I went with the change to Warrior Sprint for more damage, since I try to keep my Warhorn Swiftness up at all times, and I don't think open world PvE content is dangerous enough on average to warrant the extra healing from Stalwart Focus. Weapons used are Staff, Dagger, and Warhorn. Secondary skills he recommends are To the Limit, 
banner of defense for great justice shake it off and battle standard after quite a bit of play i do like banner of defense to keep up survivability but i think it's a bit overkill in most encounters i'm likely going to be playing around with swapping this out for on my mark for additional damage output as well as some additional healing on the table due to shouts energy or maybe even Wild Blow to help extend Berserk and get some additional Defiance Break as well as Fury. I've always liked Dagger and Warhorn, so I probably wouldn't change these. Warhorn has some really great buffs on it, and Dagger has some good damage output. If you're really hurting for some Defiance Break, popping on a Mace in your main hand rather than Dagger could be a possibility here, but Dagger does still have some Defiance Break. The name of the game for this build is to Berserk as often as possible, as your Primal Burst is what's dishing out quickness to everyone. More quickness means more damage output, meaning things die faster. Simple math. It also just does a bunch of healing too, meaning you're doing double duty just by smacking things. Overall, as a warrior main, this build feels great. It's not extremely different, in my opinion, on action economy to a normal Berserker build. Your staff two and three are your primary group supports here. Using Bullet Catcher to block attacks and bonus heal when available is also ideal. Snap Pull is quick damage, and you also want to make sure you're swapping weapons when possible to get those Warhorn skills out, dish out some daggers, DPS when everything on staff is on cooldown, and your weapon swaps are going to grant you adrenaline as well. I often will use staff a bit, swap dagger, pop that burst skill, other skills, then swap back and get the next burst skill off on staff. The survivability on this build is nuts compared to most warrior builds I've played in open world in recent memory, and I don't feel useless as far as damage either. Unlike my old Berserker build where if I screwed up just a little bit or got stunned when I went to use my Blood Reckoning heal, I felt like by comparison, I had to try to go down with this build. With regen on auto attack and so many skills that heal by design like your staff 2 and 3 abilities or the bonus heals from shouts, even with full Zerker gear, I could solo like crazy. I barely even touched my healing ability unless I really screwed up and stood in the fire. Obviously still putting out plenty of might and quickness for everyone around me too in group events if they actually stack up. Up next, I want to talk about my core warrior support build for any of your free-to-play players out there. I took what I rocked with back in the beta in December and made some tweaks with it. We're using the same gear and ability recommendations as before. In fact, the only thing we're changing is the elite tree from Berserk to Strength. So that tree is Tactics, Discipline, and Strength in a 2-3-2, 2-1-3, and 1-3-1 line. Diving in for some details on this, the Brave Stride choice gives us the stability with Staff 2 and 3 skills, as well as Dagger 2 and the Dagger Burst skill. The first passive also gives us a damaging dodge roll granting might based on targets hit by it. The second passive is going to give us more dodge endurance back when we use our burst skills, meaning we can roll more often. Great Fortitude here is giving us vitality and ferocity based on our power, which is high since I'm running Berserker for this build. This gives us even more damage output and a little bit more survivability. The Pinnacle of Strength passive gives us more power from might and increases our crit even more. And then Berserker's power in the third tree is giving us damage boosts whenever we burst, increasing our burst synergy even more. I found this build works quite well in my testing. It's not as aggressive feeling as the Heal Zerker build, and you don't burst as often as Berserker, which doesn't feel quite as fun. However, it's still quite survivable and dishes out decent damage. The biggest downside to this compared to Heal Zerker, or even the Alak Heal Blade Sworn we're going to talk about next, is that if you're looking for an actual group content support class, this might not be an ideal option. Most supports are expected to bring to the table not only healing, but either quickness or alacrity, which this build isn't able to do. However, if you don't have access to the expansion content and have a group to run with who is understanding, I do honestly think the amount of healing you can bring with full Harriers, along with the utility like near infinite 25 stack might, banner buffs, resurrection banner, and AoE stun break from Shake It Off, this is a, still a strong support build if you only have the base game and you're running more casual PvE things or even playing solo. We've got two more builds to talk about. Up next, we'll talk about Mukluk's Alak Heal Blade Sworn, and then we'll finish it up with another one of my builds, the Heal Breaker. But before I get to that, I just wanted to say that we do now have channel memberships here, and they're a great way to show your support for my content starting at just $1.99 for the Novice tier and only $4.99 for the Adventurer tier. In addition to some custom emojis and membership badges, you'll also get a shout out at the end of my videos, thanking you for supporting the channel. I do have some more membership perks planned for the future as the community grows, so stick around if you're on the fence. 
So the Salak Heel Bladeshorn, the same gear, relic, and everything. The only difference in the first two trees is going to be discipline. I actually keep Stalwart Focus as he recommends here, since Bladesworn can't weapon swap to the Warhorn in combat, rendering Wind Warrior's Sprint pretty inert. For the Staff Sworn, we're running a 1-3-3 format in the Bladesworn category, which is going to give us the 10 second alacrity in a 600 radius around us when we use Dragon Slash. This is where the build begins to break down for me, as the objective becomes in combat, waiting until the soldier's focus buff pops up, which is recurring in 10 second intervals, which at that point we want to dragon slash with that up, so we can not only alack, but actually heal with our burst skill, due to the soldier's comfort synergy with marching orders in tactics. This makes it so a large dynamic fight, you're stuck consistently looking down or trying to keep an accurate 10 second count from your last dragon slash in order to pull this off correctly, which isn't exactly what I consider fun. Not to mention the gun saber feels very underwhelming at best and problematic at worst. As in that entire kit space, the only thing you can do is potentially banner and shout to heal, not having access to your staff kit with real healing on it. I felt like this build was significantly less survivable than my core or Mucklux heal zerker build. Admittedly found it much more annoying to play and did not play nearly as long with this, maybe an hour and a half tops. Not having access to the staff burst itself really sets this build back and the tediousness of watching for soldiers focus to maximize your effectiveness just it d it doesn't feel good all in all i think if you like bladesworn this is a good enough support build for you to jam out with if you don't enjoy bladesworn like me you're probably going to want to steer clear now for the final build the staff heel breaker running the same gear i ran this with the spellbreaker tree in either a 212 or 213 format doing this is going to give us more adrenaline and deal damage when we strip boons which we now strip boons with staff 4 and dagger 3 in addition to being able to swap banner of defense with an ability like kick if we need more boon strip this also will give us protection when we successfully full counter and depending on your choice in the last tree full counter will deal more damage and copy conditions to your targets or add a tether to your target, increasing your damage on them, pulling them back to you if they get too far, granting you and your allies near you might every second. Going into this build, I really thought it would be more tanky than it ended up feeling with full counter. While yes, we do get another block which combines with a retaliation, that will in turn reset our staff burst. The issue lies in the fact that the burst caps off at 1, so the heal from the staff burst is never really that good. Soldier's focus is still only activating once every 10 seconds at most, so that doesn't change just because we're bursting more. I will say it was more fun to me to play than the Alak heal staff sworn, but it it still wasn't as good as either of the first two builds. I thought about playing around with the Sun and the Moon style and ditching offhand Warhorn for offhand Dagger and seeing how that played out, but ultimately I just felt like the overall synergy wasn't quite what I was looking for in the kit, and put it to rest after a few hours. I objectively think this is the worst of all four spec choices. It doesn't bring in Alacrity like the Bladesworn, or Quickness like the Berserker. It sacrifices higher adrenaline bursting and doesn't bring a whole lot else. I think Staff might work alright as a secondary weapon for a Spellbreaker build if you just want a little bit more utility, but I think focusing on Staff, which is what we're doing in this video, is a weakness for Spellbreaker. And that's okay, not every spec needs to be good with every weapon. So there you have it, adventurers, four interesting Staff builds, two of which I would be very happy to play on any given day. But I gotta say, Mucklux Quick Heal Berserker is definitely my crown champion, at least for the current balance patch. It's a bit of a rigged pool because I love Berserker and I've been hyped for staff. So smashing them together is a bit like Nutella and anything you can have Nutella put on. I'd love to know what you think in the comments down below, what you agree or disagree with, and any insights that you have. I'm happy with the way Warrior Staff ended up, though I do have to agree with Muckluck when he said the biggest problem with Warrior Staff was, well, the Warrior. Even just comparing the four builds at a glance, I think it's pretty telling that realistically, there's one main way to build the tactics and discipline trees. And maybe I'm wrong on that read, as and some of these other choices really are a lot closer to being good than I think, 
but it just doesn't seem that way to me. I'm currently trying to broaden my horizons in Guild Wars 2 because I've got almost 1600 out of my 2400 hours on Warrior. So I'm actually about to do a deep month long dive into Revenant in my journey to understand Guild Wars 2. Last month I spent it playing Willbender Guardian and you can click here to see my insights into what that was like spending a month as a goody two shoes in blue shoes as a warrior main. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to go find my blindfold and start working on my Ritlock impression for my Revenant. <laughs> 